Therefore, <coughs> if the ratification of this African Youth Charter can enhance that participation in the various spheres of, or of our communities, be it political, religious, academic, so we feel it's important to have the African Youth Charter ratified. And um, here in Malawi, we have other cultural practices that are harmful to young people, especially girls. For example, when a girl comes out of age, when she starts having her monthly periods, there are other cultural traditions where they are supposed to like sleep with men, elder men, as a way of, of showing that they are matured enough and they can go on with uh, adult life. So in the African Youth Charter, there is this, the, in Article 25, there's a provision of the protection of young people <coughs> through the elimination, elimination of harmful cultural practices. And for us, like I've said, we call them Jogo and Joseph Kumbi. These are cultural practices that are harmful, especially to the girl child. So we feel ratifying the African Youth Charter in our country can also break to our advantage. And apart from that, young people, we have so many responsibilities to ourselves, to our families, and to our communities, even to our continents. And um, in the past, the issue of human rights and responsibilities, they've not like been going together. We young people have only been focusing on having our rights, and mostly these rights have been demanded they Work bad for us because we use them negatively. We we'll say it's our right to do whatever we want, then we can go drinking, we can go sleeping around, and due to this effect, because of this demand for rights in the wrong way, many young people have like contracted the deadly virus, HIV and AIDS. <coughs> so we feel that the African new child, it's 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 like outlining the responsibilities that young people have. Apart from having the rights, they also have responsibilities. And we feel that this can also like help young people to understand their rights better and, and their responsibilities. And now to the Millennium Development Goals, the MDGs. Uh, here in Malawi, there are about nine MDGs that we are working on. And um, currently, I'm happy to say that many young people they are actively involved in, in these uh, M, M activities to achieve the Millennium Development Goals. Even though the MDGs that we are following, they are not like directly linked with young people, but then young people, they are taking an active role in, in achieving the Millennium Development Goals. Uh, among the, the goals that we have, there is um, eradication of extreme poverty <coughs> and hunger. Um, Young people, in terms of uh, eradicating poverty and hunger, they are working with um, gra grassroots communities in term, uh, on a volu voluntary basis, where they go into the communities, they tell young people, I mean, they tell both young people and elders in the communities the, important, the importance of development and how they can achieve their development, and they use various modes, like, for example, they use dances, they use drama, and different illustrations, just to let the people know how they can they can eradicate poverty and hunger. And there are other other situations where we've had like people go in, young people going in the villages, helping like to build houses for old people and other initiatives that are there. And apart from that, young people they are making initiatives to access loans so that they can start small scale businesses, just to empower themselves and. Uh, a lot of young people they are going into like farming, both irrigation and using the farming season that we have to grow different crops so that we eradicate hunger. And um, the other one is uh, promotion of gender equality and uh, women empowerment. <coughs> on this one, it's, it's the government and uh, non-government organizations that are doing much. Like, for example, there is um, the issue of lobbying for 50-50, the 50-50 campaign, where we are lobbying for 50-50 chances for both men and women in all sectors of, of, of our communities. Now, we have, like, in Parliament, people are lobbying for equal seats in Parliament for both 
men and women and we are also focusing like on the girl child from like the younger age giving them like conducive environment where they can grow positive positively and uh, impact positively on the, on the community and on achieving universal primary education uh, our currently our primary education is free but then uh, it was noted that a lot of young people would, like a lot of girls, they would register for primary school, but as they were growing, they would drop out of the way, either because of uh, teenage pregnancies or because when they have come out of age, there are no like sanitary structures to accommodate them. And uh, combating HIV and AIDS, malaria, and other diseases. On this MDG, uh, young people are actively involved on like on HIV and AIDS. It all goes back to the issue of youth centers and uh, peer to peer education. Like in our colleges, we have, in our colleges and secondary schools, we have like peer educators who help their fellow young women on issues that surround HIV infection, HIV prevention, and <coughs> other sexual transmitted infections. And um, there are also other MTGs like. Um, environmental sustainability where young people are also involved in the conservation of the environment where they participate in we have like the tree planting season they participate in such activities just to make sure that our biodiversity is conserved if it is difficult to change a person it's even more difficult to change a country and uh, what happened in portugal uh, 36 years ago is that we changed because for 46 years we live in a dictatorship and uh, this is I'm talking about uh, for you because uh, uh, all, uh, not comparing with Denmark all the other countries probably pass for the same process so it is important to understand uh, the change that involves to have a revolution and to have a democratic system and on a democracy, there is a very annoying thing, especially for those in government, is that people complain a lot, people demand a lot, and it's very difficult to, uh, to give everything to everyone. And what we learned is, in the last 36 years, is that if we throw money at the problem, we don't solve it. So, Millennium Goals. Uh, because we are part of the development world, or the developed world, uh, many of the millennium goals are not seen as our, for our population <coughs> as something that has to do with us. Mainly for us, and sorry for that, we think it's an African problem. Because uh, child mortality, we have one of the lowest in the world. We have one of the best and uh, most well considered health uh, national service, even if, if you make, uh, uh, it is considered one of the ten best in the world. But if we do a survey in Portugal, most of the population, perhaps 70% of the population, will say the national health service sucks. So this is a problem of democracy. And also there are many problems in Portugal about conceptions and misconceptions. Meaning that most of the people consider that, for instance, uh, the poor people live in uh, uh, the slums. We have slums in Portugal. Or most of the poor people live in social housing. That is true. But as uh, our Danish uh, friends told us, if we consider the 7,500 kwashas uh, as minimum day rate to live, Portugal, we have 20%, that is 1 out of 5 uh, percent of population living below poverty level. And uh, this is, we are speaking about Europe. Portugal is in Europe, member of the European Union. And I'm not speaking about uh, immigrants, legal or not, I'm speaking about the general population. Uh, of course, we also have uh, many of the most rich people in the world. But, but uh, you can see uh, the biggest example is Mr. Salinas in Mexico. He's one of the richest, if not the richest man in the world. And Mexico is not in the 10 uh, most rich countries in the world. And 
Um, this explains a little bit about our country. So, Millennium Goals. Our main concern for our government, uh, and when I say a government, I'm saying about the state, not the elected government, is uh, the priorities are sustainable development, mainly due to our European Union integration process. As you, you know, European Union, the main problem for us uh, is considered the environment. Um, and um, cooperation in the world, meaning the connection with the world. We give, uh, beside Portugal, uh, we do not consider ourselves a rich country, but we give 0.5% of our GDP, and the goal is to reach 1%. Uh, cooperation is very important, but Portugal mainly contributes and cooperates with Portuguese speaking countries. As you know, in, till 1974, we had a very big empire. Uh, we consider an empire, so you can imagine, from an empire to a small country out of, outside of Europe. And you see, change is different and it's difficult. Um, um, so, Millennium Goals. Use. We are an aging country, meaning that uh, we get. We have, we have an more, aging population. We have more deaths than births. <laughs> either for father and mother. However, uh, the, gen the, the general the gender balance is being unbalanced because of the birth rate. As you know, more women are born than men. Uh, policies and politics are, are pointed mainly to the target groups. This is how a politician works. I want to get votes. I need more votes than my opponent. Where I can get votes? Who is voting? And the, uh, who is voting in Europe is mainly the baby boomers, meaning people that were born 50 years ago, 40 years ago, um, <coughs> and 60 years ago. So, um, most of the policies are look, looking at these people, the taxpayers, the those who are living off welfare, and this means that most of youth policy is considered something of a drag, something uh, minimum. And this, I believe, is completely opposite of problem, perhaps what is happening in Africa. Mm -hmm. Because the problems here, you have many youngsters. You have to deal with the youngsters' problems. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about the African Charter with regard to the So, uh, the African Charter, like you said yesterday, was not signed, not even ratified it. Uh, the reason is the, the use of Botswana for the national service. So no way the government or the minister could sign the charter if the use of Botswana didn't know about the charter. So there had to be some consultations first with the young people. So after that consultation and also uh, having to understand what the young people of Botswana think about the charter, then uh, they could come up with some things that they can actually say uh, the charter uh, can be uh, signed and can be used in Botswana. So apart from uh, the consultation with the youth, with the, the, the government couldn't sign the charter. So the consultations have been made. Uh, uh, the youth have been, uh, there have been some workshops whereby the, the, the charter was uh, analyzed to see how to best fit Botswana. And then the other reason also is that uh, in Botswana, you have the national youth policy, <coughs> which has been there before even the African Youth Charter came to be. So everything that is in the youth charter uh, is actually what is in the national youth policy. So uh, we, the, the, the government looked at this and they said, but how can you manage this too, the African Youth Charter and the, the Botswana National uh, Youth uh, the National Youth Council. And uh, also, uh, I think also, we found that in the national youth policy, uh, the age range for a young person is from 12 to 29, but in the African Youth Charter is from 12 to 10 or 12 to 35. So that was the age difference of which 
there had that there there was supposed to be a discussion between you. Maybe we would want to work with the African channel, or maybe they have to change that uh, nationalist policy, and the age should uh, go up. And uh, those are some of the reasons why the charter delayed to be signed or even uh, rectified. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, Botswana will be, I guess, this month, right? Yeah. On the 24th of this month, uh, there will be uh, some kind of official meeting in Mexico. Mexico and then uh, that is where the charter will be signed. So after all the consultations have been done and everything has been understood, on the 24th of this month, the charter will be, will be, will be signed in Mexico. We have what we call the Youth Development Fund. The youth development fund, what happens with it is that, uh, like I said, the national policy says a young person is from 12 to 18, but when it comes to giving funds, it starts from 18 years to 29 years. So that is how we do it. And then, it used to be a grant. A young person was given a grant of 50,000 kula, but because uh, uh, things are changing, there's so many developments, you realize that 50,000 is no longer enough for someone to start a business. If maybe you want to go into IT, you want to go into uh, technology, that money wasn't enough. Maybe for other things it was enough. So the money was raised to 100,000. The 100,000, what is happening with it now is that we give you 50%, the government gives a young person 50% as a loan, the other 50% is a grant. So if maybe you're asking for 80,000 pula, then the 40,000 will be a grant, the 40,000 will be a loan, of which the loan is interest free. And then, uh, you can do whatever business you want to do in Botswana, uh, whatever you want to go into uh, services, uh, producing, uh, uh, technology, you can go into that. Even funding, you can go into that. And uh, yeah, I think the loan is return it within a uh, <coughs> five years. So, and then also after you have been approved and then getting the loan and buying everything, there's a, uh, there's a program where like, the, 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 the Department of Youth will monitor you to see how you are doing and also mentor you in everything that you are doing so that your business can succeed. And then we have also what is called uh, Young Farmers Fund, right? Young Farmers Fund, which is from CEDA, uh, there is purely loan. If you want to get a loan, you want to do farming, you want to uh, rare uh, goals or anything to do with the cows, uh, uh, dairy, those kind of things, they give you money, is a loan, total loan, and then also they will help you through the business so that the business can succeed. And also about politics, uh, for a long time, I think in, in, in Botswana, the youth were not uh, empowered enough to be in politics. Yes, they were uh, supporters. They were not actively participating in politics. But I think of recent, it has been of a great change. You'll find that, uh, like my friend over there, she's actually a councillor, the, politi uh, the political councillor. And, uh, I think also we used to have the, the, the youth parliament, which didn't work out well, but last time I heard from the, I think it was the director, somebody, yeah, that the parliament, uh, I think it will be renewed sometime this year or even next year, then it should come back again. Let me just see, that is that that I wanted to say about Bhutan. Um, yeah, okay. And we have, we want to speak about how we are. Yeah, how um, we are. How it is in Denmark? Yeah. How, how we yes. how we are preventing the yeah. hunger and stuff in Denmark? Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to start to talk about the first goal, um, which is to have poverty and uh, hunger in the world. And it is so that in Denmark we actually don't have extreme poverty. Um, we only have about 250,000 people living for under 200. Um, for under 43 US dollars a day, which is the Western country's poverty line. It's, um, it's uh, seven and a half thousand crosses per day. It's a poverty line in the Western oh countries. Yeah. Seven, oh, seven, seven and a half thousand crosses per day is the poverty line in the Western what countries. You have to make your own calculation. Yeah. <coughs> that we have a system which we call the welfare state, um, which means that we try to secure poverty in our society. Um, we pay a lot of taxes uh, and 
uh, this, it is so that the, mo the ones earning the most are also the ones who pay the most tax. If people don't have a job, um, they get money from the state so they can still pay their rent and still get their food while they are unemployed. Uh, and they also have chances to re-educate themselves so they may be are able to find new jobs. Um, actually, right now we are, as you can see on one of the photos, we are demonstrating against reductions in our welfare state because we have a, a new government which is <coughs> trying to you know, make reductions. Um, our education. In Denmark we have to, it's mandatory. mandatory to go to school for nine years. Um, all school in Denmark, uh, preschool, middle school, high school, college, university is paid by the government. Uh, the nine years, in the, when the nine years go, um, yeah, the nine years you go to school when you're little, <coughs> it's paid by the government. And the, the books and the paper and there are no school uni uniforms, all paid, you can just go to school. Uh, when you get to high school and university, you get um, a monthly payment by the government, so you still can pay rent and food uh, while you're taking an education. The third goal is about equal rights between men and women. Um, and it is so that we consider ourselves to be a very equal country, but we have this problem that uh, still uh, women and men are not getting as the same amount of money for the same work. Women are still getting less, which is very good, <coughs> we think, in our in a modern society. Um, we also have a problem that there is too many men in top positions in Denmark. So we actually are thinking about making <coughs> women quotes, so they, there has to be a certain amount of women in top positions. Um, another thing we are trying to do to uh, make it easier for the women to stay in, <coughs> to, women to stay in, the, in their jobs and in top positions and to get top positions is to make it possible for the men to take, for the father to take as long a maternity leave as the mother. Um, <laughs> so there's no, so there's no injustice in that manner. Fatality among children is that in Den Denmark, uh, only three out of a thousand children die uh, as children, as small children. Um, um, uh, and fatality among pregnant and uh, women, women giving birth um, in Denmark, that is not something that <coughs> happened really. It's very rare. Very small. Very small part of uh, Pregnant women. Mortality among pregnant. Mortality. Mortality, <laughs> Mortality ah, among pregnant. pregnant. Yeah, and women given birth. Um, and in Denmark, that is because of the wealth education. They get a wealth education. And um, yeah, the, the hygiene, hygiene among. Uh, nurses and doctors on the hospitals. Also, like, they are reducing. Pregnant women in Denmark are told, don't drink alcohol while you're pregnant and don't smoke cigarettes while you're pregnant to reduce uh, problems with the, the children in the one. Yeah. And goal number six is uh, dealing with uh, illnesses. And it's uh, only one point uh, one zero point one percent and then what who suffers from HIV and AIDS. It's only five thousand people in Denmark and uh, zero percent suffers from malaria of course I can say <laughs> and the greatest uh, well not the greatest but the the cancer <coughs> the, the illness most people suffer from in Denmark it's two hundred thousand out of six million people who suffer from cancers, but we doubt a little bit about this statistic <coughs> because uh, we think that almost every family deals with some kind of uh, cancer.
Okay. Ask for the girls to say C mm -hmm. si. when, yes. when she raises uh, her hand. C. Si. Si. Girls say yes. No. Si. And the guys say no. 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 Yes. No. Si. No. Guys? No. Saud. Saud. Saud, which means else. Okay. You. But Saud is really important because it's also when uh, someone uh, sneezes at you, you say Saud. Saud. And when you make a toast, you, you, sh you say Saud. So if you don't know what word to use, you just say Saud because it's probably correct. Because you can use it for everything. Almost. And uh, that's pretty much it. We just. Oh yeah, so that. When we're greeting each other, like in the morning, we say Mazuka Brandi. Mazuka Brandi. Mazuka Brandi. Mazuka Brandi. That's to say, uh, how did you say Mazuka <laughs> Brandi? Uh, in the afternoon, like afternoon, we say Mwaswera Bwanji. Mwaswera Bwanji. Mwaswera Bwanji is good afternoon. Okay. We do this with things and things. Yes, we sent it
we use from a plastic paper presentation, the ones that we use when we are presenting a workshop or something like that. So we just produce it and we cut it out using a razor blade. We just do the drawing, then we put it, then we cut it out. After that, we then use this as our stencil. Then we produce that one. And um, the other technique that we do um, is what we call maybe a, a little bit of tailoring, hand sewing whereby we produce beans for several months. So, yeah, that's uh, uh, sewing, hand sewing. And um, we use the pieces after we've dyed, then we can cut them. Then we use them uh, for, make, for producing those. And again, what we have uh, is uh, what we call foam foam. Foam foam. This one. Foam foam. Yeah, foam foam. And again, we use... Uh, uh, we use wool, like this one, which is used for knitting, but we can still use it to produce what you call pom Then you can be using it as uh, maybe you have your curtains, then we have that strip that we use right there when we want to push our curtain. You can use it just to Basically, functional literacy class where they should know how to read, write, and do some maths. That's why they are here.